In this video, we're going to continue our series of videos that looks at linear programming. Uh, we've used this example in a number of previous examples, um, but now we're going to use it to solve a problem using computation. So on the left-hand side of my screen, I have the problem that we're working on, and on the right-hand side of my screen, I have an Excel workbook in uh, Mac. So when we're working in uh, at trying to solve this using computation, it's important that we keep our spreadsheet organized. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just write solution. And I'm going to reflect that we had two decision variables. The first decision variable was fuel additive. And we labeled this as X1 in our previous examples. And our second decision variable was solvent base. And I'll label this as X2. Now, to get these cells to fully show, we're just going to go up to the top. And when it gets a little thick black bar with two arrows, we're just going to double click. And Microsoft Excel will automatically adjust the cells uh, to the appropriate size. Um, because these are decision variables, one of the things you might like to do is you might like to format the cells so that um, it's clear which are your decision variables. So I'm just going to use a bit of a thicker border and I'm going to put a yellow fill in my decision variables. Of course, this is totally optional. You don't need to do this, um, but sometimes it helps to um, keep our spreadsheet organized by using colors that are meaningful to us. Then I'm gonna create our profit line. So for profit, I'm just gonna label profit. And I know that for X1 or the fuel additive, we have a profit of $40. And for the solvent base, we have a profit of $30, right? We've gone over this in previous examples, so if you need a refresher, see the previous videos. Now, we know that these are in dollars, so we can just format this so that it's in dollars. So we're gonna click on number and then the dollar sign, and then it will nicely um, give us our units in dollars. Then I'm gonna label this cell profit. And before I type in what's in there, I'm gonna remind myself or put a little note to myself about what our objective function is and we established this in a previous video. So the max Z is equal to 40 X1 plus 30 X2. This isn't totally necessary. It's just a nice reminder for us um, when we're working through our solution to remind ourselves uh, what our objective function is. Of course, we don't need the dollar signs there because they will be in the same units. So 40 X1 plus 30 X2, it's assumed that that's dollars. From there, we need to make our profit function. So we're gonna write equals sum product. And then we're gonna select cells B5 and, C3 and C5, comma. And then we're gonna select cells B3 and C3, close bracket. And we're gonna go up into the bar and we're just going to put a dollar sign in front of the letters and numbers associated with B3 and C3. What this does is it fixes our reference cell. So this won't change. It will always reference this cell and that's exactly what we want. So then we hit enter and we should get a value of zero. Now, one thing that you can do here is we can format our profit cell just like we did our decision variables. So let's go ahead and pick a border. So just a little bit of a thicker border. And I'm just going to color this um, let's say in green because we're dealing with money. So let's color this green. So that's our profit. And of course we can adjust this number to be dollars um, since we know that we're dealing with profit. Now we can double check that our solution is working. Effectively what this equation did for us, the sum product B5, C5, C, B3, C3, is it's taking the value in B3 and multiplying it by the value in B5. So we can do this as just an example. We'll type in one and you'll notice that it quickly populates that we have a profit of 40. Now this makes sense because if we go to our max or our objective function, if we had one unit of X1 and zero units of X2, we would get 40 times one, which gives us 40. If we had one unit of X1 and one unit of X2, we'd have 40 plus 30, which gives us 70. So we can be fairly confident that we have at least set up our profit function correctly. <clears throat> From there, 
we're going to look at our constraints. And again, we've talked about these constraints in a previous video. So we have three constraints. We have constraints for material one, material two, and material three. Now within these constraints, we're told that for material one, it's two fifths of X one plus one half X two. And we're told that this must be less than or equal to 20. So we'll just set this up here as the left hand side, right hand side, sorry, less than or equal to, and then our right hand side is 20. For material two, there is no restriction on, uh, there's no requirement for X1, but we have one fifth of X2, so equals one divided by five. And again, the amount of material we have for production of material two is less than or equal to five. And then finally for material three, we have three fifths of X1 and three tenths of X2. And again, we have enough material for less than or equal to 21 tons. Now, one of the things that we can do is again, we can format our cells. We can format our cells here so that we have, uh, let's just fill these in as red on the right hand side. Since we're hard coding these in, that isn't changing. And then we have our left hand side and perhaps we'll just make this, um, we'll make this like a, like an orange color. Now, within our left-hand side, we have to use an equation to make sure that we are satisfying our constraint. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna take equals sum product, and we're gonna highlight cells B8 and C8, comma, and then we're going to go up to our decision variables and highlight cells B3 and C3. Now, we want to lock the reference cells for B3 and C3, and you'll see why in a second. So we're just gonna put dollar signs in front of the numbers and letters so that these reference cells do not change. And then we're going to close our brackets and hit enter, and you'll see a zero show up. So this is our equation, sum product B8, C8, B3, C3. And then we're gonna hover our cursor over the bottom and what we'll, we can do then is just double click and the same equation will be applied to material two as it will be to material one. Now, uh, sorry, uh, as it was to material one with the exception that we are looking at row B9, C9. Same thing when we look at material three, we're looking at B10, C10. Now we can just test to make sure this works. So let's say we put in 10, of material one, or sorry, a fuel additive of X1. And what we see is, well, 10 times 0 0.4 gives us four. 10 times 0 0.6 gives us six. So this looks like it checks out nicely. Um, what about if we put 10 here? Well, again, 10 times 0 0.5 gives us five. 10 times 0 0.2 gives us two. 10 times 0.3 gives us three. We can put 10 in each. And again, look, they're adding nicely together, right? 10 times 0 0.4 is four, 10 times 0 0.5 is five. So four plus five is nine. And again, we're looking at our constraints. So again, we're just gonna set these, we're gonna clear our inputs here. We don't need to put anything here. We're using computation to solve for it. So we're not going to uh, monkey around too much. From there, we can now solve this using our solver. So we're gonna click on data. And then we're going to click on solver. And what you can see is that this pop-up window should have popped up for you. And we need to set our objective function. So we'll delete what it thinks it wants to be our objective function. And our objective function is found in D5, right? This is the objective function we set up at the beginning. And then we're gonna say by changing variables, 
in B3, C3. These are our decision variables. And then we're going to add some constraints. So our constraint can be material one, less than or equal to. In this case, we're doing less than or equal to in our constraint here. We're going to click add again, less than or equal to our constraint, which is five and add again. And for material three, our left hand side, less than or equal to our right hand side. And we're going to click OK. Now what you should get is a screen that looks similar to this. And we need to check the box here that says make unconstrained variables non-negative. That is what we want. So if it's not checked, uh, make sure it's checked because we're dealing with um, non-negative values. So x1, x2 must be greater than or equal to zero. And then we look here and we're gonna say select a solving method we are not interested in, C, in GRC nonlinear. We are interested in simplex LP. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click solve. And then what's going to pop up is you're going to get a pop-up box that looks like this that says keep solver solutions or, or not. And then it's going to ask us if we want reports. So we're going to click uh, yes, we would like an answer report. And we are going to click OK. And then you'll see in the bottom of your screen, you should see an answer report automatically show up. In the cells, you'll see that they have identified the, the optimal solution is to have 25 X1 and 20 of X2, which gives you a profit of 1600. Again, this is consistent with, with, with what we've determined in previous videos using the various um, non-computation methods to solve for the optimal solution. But if we want to look at our um, answer report here. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So here's our answer report. They've told us our objective cell, um, our original value, because we have no values in our original. Um, that's fine. It's expected to be blank. And our final value, so the maximum or optimal profit that we can create is 1600. In our variable cells, you'll notice that we have uh, solution fuel additive, that's X1, and solution solvent base, X2. Um, we didn't have any original values. That's because we left those blank. Those were the values in the yellow shaded box. And then our final value um, being 25 of X1 and 20 of X2. That's consistent with what we've solved in other problems. And then we can look down here at our constraints. So what we see is that for material 1 and material 3, we have zero slack. And it's also told us that it is binding, meaning that we have used up all of the resources for materials one and three. And alternatively, what we have here for material two is that it is non-binding and that there is slack, a slack of one, meaning that there is um, resources left over after we have found the optimal solution for um, for the combination of fuel additive and solvent base. So very quickly, we can go back to our page. This is our solution or how we've solved or set up our linear programming in Microsoft Excel. And then by using Solver, it has given us this very nice answer report that nicely answers all of our questions. It's important that you label things appropriately in your um, formula sheet. So that is in how you set this up because it gives it automatically um, in the answer report. And you would need these to have full marks on a solution. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.